Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we're gonna continue the Ms. Pac-Man restoration series. As you guys know, I got this from a buddy of mine. If you missed that, click on the link above. You can link to that, it was a really cool video. Uh, we're probably gonna mess around with this now where we're gonna kinda get the board running the way I want it. Um, I have a Ms. Pac board here that's untested. We're gonna test this together and we're gonna kinda swap around a couple chips on this to make it the fast version, the slow version, the cheat version. So all kinds of things and we'll have some fun with that. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right in the video. Okay guys, so this is the cabinet. It's actually in nicer shape on this side. Uh, it doesn't have any wear marks because most people were righty and you see a little bit of wear on here. Um, it's really funny because um, this here is faded. So I'm guessing that maybe um, this part uh, was exposed to the elements and then this because so many people touched it it got kind of oily from people's fingers and whatnot and that actually protected it a little bit from sun fading that's my only guess as to why that's like that over here too you can see this is like right where people would touch it so um, I'm guessing that's what protected that but I am going to get rid of this artwork and put the new brand new prototype artwork on there I think it looks pretty badass it's going to be unique and you know I like to be different um, this here the marquee has these bolts in there. I'm not really sure what those are for. They're not holding anything in. Um, my buddy who gave me this said he took it apart um, and he couldn't figure out why they were there. They were just holding nothing. They're kind of loose and whatnot. So don't know why they were there. If you guys know in the comments, just let me know um, if they served the purpose on the inside. If some machines had them, some didn't, I don't know. Um, but otherwise, this would have been a nice shape. I'm probably gonna end up taking this down. Um, this is, yeah, this is plastic. So I'm gonna probably hang it on the wall uh, once I swap it out. The one that I'm getting that's a prototype, I believe that one's glass and it's reverse printed, so it's gonna be nicer than this one. Um, same thing for the bezel, you know, this is gonna be replaced. You can see here that it's all flaking and stuff. Uh, this is glass, the one I'm getting I believe is plastic, which is reverse printed as well. Uh, I'm not sure if he offers a glass option. If he does, I'm gonna see if he does, maybe I can grab it so that they'll both be glass, this and the marquee. Uh, but this one, you know, it's, it's flaking and stuff. You can see here. You know, it just has issues. Oops, I just pressed it. And while we're here, actually, you can see the monitor is not wavy like it used to be. So I'll turn this off right here. You can check it out. Looks pretty nice, actually, for not being, you know, I mean, my buddy capped it for what he had. He didn't do a full cap kit on it. And then uh, when we saw the waviness, as you saw on the other monitor, I'll actually put some footage up here. You can see it. Um, so that monitor was really, really wavy. Uh, this one is now fine because we saw when we took it apart we saw a bulging cap and I did have that cap on hand We swapped out that one cap and it stopped it <clears throat> So, uh, you know, I guess it was successful at that point, but I'm gonna give it a full cap kit I have the one for the Pro Max, which which is what this is Pro Max is actually a Geo 7 replacement that is a way odd brand So, you know, not the best, but I'm gonna try doing it anyway. This does have burn-in uh, You'll see the maze. I have to let it stop for a second here for you to see it so right now you can see the maze looks fine and everything and it looks good to go. But if I put the light on it, you can see the burn in right there. It's all over the place. So it's severe burn in on there. The person that had this before actually put car tint on the glass itself um, across um, and made it, you know, to try to hide it a little bit, which I thought was pretty clever, but uh, we'll see. I'm not really sure what I want to do with the monitor, but I'm definitely going to give it a cap kit. Um, let's see what else. The control panel here does need some work. You know, I'm probably gonna replace it again. Uh, it's not a big deal because the prototype version of the artwork replaces this whole thing anyway. So uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave it until I get the artwork in, in and then, uh, you know, once I finish and make sure it all works good, then I'll swap it out, but I'm not worried. The joystick is very responsive. I'm not gonna rebuild it at the moment, but once I, you know, strip this for the control panel and take all the parts out to put the artwork on, I'm probably gonna rebuild that just to lube it up and stuff. Uh, the inside, you can see there's tons of scratches here, but uh, that's going to go away when I restore it. That's pretty easy. You just sand it down. Um, and what else? Let's see. The side we already looked at. We talked about this here. Um, the front actually has some issues here. You have the typical bolts. You know, you see them right here too. I'm probably going to cover those up. I'll put dowels in there. And I'm going to put Bondo over it, sand it down really nice, and then I'll apply the artwork over that. Um, I'm not sure if the prototype, I have to really study the pictures, if this continued all the way down, because typical uh, Ms. Pax actually they painted it and then sprayed it across and painted this 
you know, I prefer if this is all black, but I guess that's the way they did it where they, you know, all packs are like that or mis packs that I've seen. Uh, so anyway, we'll do that. Um, this here, I think is supposed to be there. I have to double check that. I'm not sure, but uh, I think they're supposed to be there because it's holding the coin door inside um, on the other side. So, but uh, yeah, there's some damage here. You know, it looks like from that lock bar that was swinging down, maybe somebody tried to break in. This uh, coin door is a little bent up here. You can see it's like bent and stuff, but I have a replacement coin door that's fully restored. Um, so I'm gonna swap that out and put the, the other one in there and you know, just put in the proper LED lights because these are actually not the right LED lights because they're flat. You can't really tell, but they're flat. You want the ones that are round and uh, amber, that way it shines through. So, you know, this does need some work. So again, I'm getting rid of that coin door, but for now it's gonna stay. Uh, turning this whole thing around here, you can see there's some wear marks up here. Uh, this will probably have to be sprayed uh, with some satin black paint. And then I'm just turning it around here. And here's where that sticker is. You can see it a little closer. It has a North Carolina, you know, um, license <laughs> for video games. They tried to cover it up, which is kind of neat, I guess, to reduce the wear. And that wore down a little bit too. Uh, but this has a typical wear where people hold on like that. Uh, same thing down here. You can see all this here where they wore it. Um, and then, you know, after you can see some of the wood grain is popping through. So what, before I put the artwork, I'm just going to skim. I don't know if I'm going to put the skim bondo. There's like a bondo paint you can use. Uh, but I may definitely sand this down to smooth it out and give it a quick coat and then put the artwork over that because I don't want it to show, you know, with these bumps and stuff. You could just feel it. It's the texture of the wood. Um, and of course, you know, you could see over here now all that stuff. So, you know, it's not too bad. It might need a little repair over here, maybe with Bondo on the bottom here. Uh, but I'll do all that. But, you know, here too, you know, that's all from like the uh, back door. It got chipped and stuff and nicked. So I'll put some Bondo, get that all set, paint it, get the artwork put on. I may do that. It's starting to get a little cold now. So I may do that next summer. I'm not really too sure. So for now, I just opened up the back. We're going to go in here and mess with the board and swap ROMs around and daughter boards and all that stuff and try to get this thing uh, to a Miz pack that I like. <laughs> so yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, set up the tripod. We'll get this all set up and we'll start working on, uh, you know, doing some tests on the back and messing around with the board. Okay, you saw it before when I started it, but um, I'm going to start another game here. And you're going to see this is a fast version of uh, Pac-Man. So. The speed chip is installed. The speed chip is on 6F. And what you do is there's a slow chip and a fast chip. So what I want to do right now is I want to make it as stock as possible before we start modding around with it and messing around with it. So let me go ahead. We're going to um, change the chip out. I'll show you which one to do. And then we can change it to the normal speed chip. Um, and that way we'll try it again and we'll see if it's a normal Pac-Man. Okay, so we're in the back of the machine and um, it's still on. I didn't turn it off or anything, but I just want to show you real quick where everything is. Now, these two are the chips. If you want to convert this to a Ms. Pac-Man, uh, you actually have to take this off. There's a chip under here. It's a processor. And then uh, you got to swap these two out to Ms. Pac-Man and then take out that processor, put the door to board connector in and then put that processor onto the door to board itself. And then you turn it on and it's converted to a Ms. Pac-Man. Now to make it fast or slow, it's the third chip right here, it's 6F. Right now it says fast pack on it. I think someone swapped it out in order to make it the fast version. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that out and put the slow version back in and then turn it on and see if it works. So we're putting the slow version. You don't really need to take the whole thing out. I'm not going to. I'm just gonna pop that out, turn it off first, of course. You gotta take this daughter board uh, off and out there in order to get to that. You can get to it if you're really careful, but it's just easier just to pop it off. So we're gonna do that right now. So let me hurry up and shut it off. All right. And the chips that I have, I actually burned a whole bunch here. Um, I basically have uh, Pac-Man, uh, the whole thing, because I wasn't really sure if these needed repair or not, plus the other board I have. So I burned extra chips just in case because uh, Ms. Pac is really a Pac-Man just with these two extra chips here and then the daughter board that goes in there. So um, I burned them all just in case. I burned a normal Pac-Man, which, which we're gonna put in now so we can see if it's normal. And then there's a Pac-Man cheat at 6F as well. 
um, that we're going to swap this one once we put it to normal. We'll take the normal one out, pop this in there, and with the Chi, if you hold down player two, it goes fast. If you let go, it's slow. So it's kind of cool to have that. And then I think if you hold player one, it, um, it does invincible mode where they can't kill you. So kind of neat to have. I figured I'd try it out uh, to kind of get the best of both worlds until I get my uh, 96 and one mod. Uh, which my buddy Mike um, still has, you know, he's uh, borrowing it for a little bit. Uh, but he'll bring it by and then we'll install it. And then uh, we'll have the 96 and one with 96 games. But for now, I figured we'd put the cheat in, but let's go ahead and make it normal first. All right, so I have my screwdriver here. And the first thing you're gonna do is, uh, you know, make sure it's off, which it is. You're just gonna gently pull this out. There you go. So it's basically a kind of daughter card that goes in there. And it's going to be facing down the notch. There's like a little notch in there, so you can tell. It's going to be facing the same direction that all the other ones are facing in. So I just popped that out. I'll put it down here safely. And then here's the processor. So if you want to make it a Miz pack, you're going to pop this one out and then put it in the daughter board and then put the daughter board has like a little ribbon cable, like an interface, which goes into here. Uh, but we're going to keep it a Pac-Man for now. We're just doing that so we can get to this chip right here. And I believe it's this one. It says fast on it. It says fast pack. So let me go ahead. It's easier to take it off from the top than to squeeze it on the bottom. You can, but I don't believe you can get a screwdriver in there. Yeah, it's harder to do. So I usually do it from the top. So, so it pops out pretty easy. I've done this so many times before. So that's the chip. I just popped it out. Not just facing down. So I'm going to keep this in a safe spot. Put it here. And I'm gonna put in normal 6F Pac-Man, which I burned. I'm gonna make sure the notch is facing down. And, oops, actually it's this one here. And then I'm just gonna hold it in, pop it in, there we go. So that's in, now I'm gonna put this back, make sure it's facing down as well. And that kind of goes in like that. All right, so it's all set, let's turn it on. And let's see how it looks. All right, so I popped around to the front and starting a new game. Yep, so it looks like it's now the regular version of Pac-Man. Cool. Nice, so it works fine. Go ahead and get some more and I'll die here. Awesome. Now I'm going to turn on the light a little bit because I want you guys to see. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You guys can see what I'm doing here with the control panel. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. Yeah, that's good right there. So you can see if I'm holding down player two, it's not going to do anything. So I'm, I'm basically going slow here. When I hold down player two, it does nothing. If I hold down player one, I should be able to get killed. Let's see. Yep. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna go and pop in the cheat. I'm not gonna show you how to do it, but it's the same thing. You just pop out that same normal Pac-Man ROM on 6F, and I'm gonna pop in the special cheat ROM that I have, that when you hold this button down, it goes fast, and if you let go, it's slow, and if you press this one here, it's uh, invincibility. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so I popped in the ROM. Hopefully you guys can see good, uh, where you see everything, yep. So I'm gonna hit a one player game. And it's the normal version of Pac-Man as long as you don't hit those buttons. So you can see here, I'm eating everything. It's fine. Now, if I don't wanna die, you hold down player one. So right now, <laughs> I'm totally immune by holding player one down. Once I let go though, it kills you. I thought that was pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, the other thing too is um, if you want it to be fast, you can hold it down and you become fast Pac-Man. So I actually remember seeing this hacked version like in a rest stop one time where you would hold the button down and for the life of me, I could not find it in MAME ever. Uh, but it is a real cool feature here. You could eat fast. If you let go, it becomes slow again. But you could always slow. Just press it to go really fast. And then if I'm in trouble, I just hold down both and I'll still be fast but immune. So it's kind of neat that it has a little cheat there. Uh, my son actually likes the fast version. I kind of tend to gravitate towards the slow version of Pac-Man, the original. So having this cheat I think would be really good um, where, 
you know, I play the fast ver I played a slow version, he'll play the fastest by holding down a button. So I have to hold down the button and then play. The only thing is that I can't play with my left hand like I'm showing you, but I tend to play with my right, so I'll kind of crisscross my hands like this. Just for now, you know, again, until I get the 96 and one. But to me, it's a great little mod that allows you to play stuff. Yeah, I'm not gonna link to the ROMs because uh, I know Namco has issues with that now, with <laughs> copyrights and stuff. So, um, but I, what I will do is I'll uh, just tell you it's uh, if you th if you Google Roth the blog on the repair and modifications for Pac-Man's, um, you'll see stuff on there on how to do that, on how to burn that ROM that I'm talking about. So there it is, and then what's cool is that the cutscenes in between, usually they typically mess up. So if you hold this down, he kind of goofs up. See, he goes through them like that. You know, you can just let it be the normal cutscene by not pressing anything, so that's pretty neat. All right, so let me go ahead. Um, now that that's there, we're gonna go ahead and leave that ROM in there because it's not gonna affect anything. And we're gonna see if we can pop in the Ms. Pack uh, PCB, the uh, daughter card on there. Uh, to see if that does anything, um, you know, to upgrade that. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I'm in the back of the machine. I'm actually going to shut it off. And I'm going to get rid of this grounding strap right here just temporarily. I'm not even sure if it's doing anything, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to put that down because it's kind of in the way of what we're doing. So let me see if I can zoom in a little better. So um, you can see the chips here. These are the two Pac-Man chips you have to change to Ms. Pac-Man. Um, I'm going to go ahead, um, I actually examined the other board, and um, I'll show you, you know, separately, um, but it looked like this piece here, on this, on the board over there, um, one of these pins, I'm actually going to take it out. This is usually strapped down with like a zip tie, and, or a tie wrap, and um, one of these pins is broken on the other one, so it's definitely not going to work. Uh, there are a couple ROMs that were broken as well, and I'll show you those later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this board that I know works and just to eliminate uh, stuff, I'm gonna take this processor out, put it in the other processor. Um, actually, I'm just gonna pop the daughter board right on there and change these two things out. So let's do that now uh, in order to make it a Ms. Pack. So my screwdriver, I had it. Let me see if I can find it again. Oh, it's right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these out. And the reason I'm doing it from the top here is because the space between the chip and the actual uh, socket is a little bigger. So I'm popping this one out. Now these aren't labeled, so I'm going to just keep them in order here. And those are Buffett's actually. i got to give them back to him. Um, he actually, this board was a mess, and I'm going to show you a quick picture. If you look here, you can see uh, there were tons of mods on it where you had like uh, these wires going to like bigger chips. Um, which basically made it a Pac-Man and a Ms. Pac. And then there were all these little uh, switches and stuff that the guy had inside the coin door that you could actually flip it up and down and switch between the games. So, you know, at the time that was a good hack, <laughs> but now they have multi-boards which you just pop in there and it's, you know, it's, it's so easy. You know, the high score save kit as well and you can just put the multi-pack on there so it eliminates all that fuss. Now you don't really have to do that. So I have my chips here. Um, that one, I believe, let me look here. I believe they're five F and five, yeah, five E and five F. So I have those here. Now there's normal Pac-Man five E and five F, uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in Ms. Pac five E and five F, which is right here. So five E, I believe is the one that is 5E and F. Okay, yeah, 5E is the one that's that way. So this is 5E right here. I'm going to pop that in there. And the board's a little, I actually had it a little loose. You can see this kind of came out by me doing that. And then 5F is pack 5F. It's right here. So I'm going to pop that in there too. Kind of got to just like, this one looks like and when they're new, sometimes they're bent outwards. So you just got to bend them in a little bit. So I usually do that at the edge of the cabinet here. Let's try it again. There we go. So that's nice and snug. I can push it in. All right, so 5E and 5F. And then this one here I'm going to take off temporarily. It's going to go back on because it needs it for, for uh, his pack. 
and then I'm going to take the processor out. So the processor There we go. So I'm going to put that on the side too cuz I'm going to try the one that's already in the daughter card. So I'm not going to bother swapping it out. So let me go ahead and grab that. All right, so this is a daughter card that you need. Um, I'm not sure if these ROMs work <laughs> or if they're correct. Um, you know, um, I don't know if they're working or not. We'll find out, won't we? Uh, this is a Z80 processor. And then, uh, you know, I'm not going to bother swapping it out. It already has it on there. But if you were converting uh, this back to a regular Pac-Man, you would actually take this processor out stick it right in there and then swap these two chips out and you'd have a regular pac-man so that's all you do so in my case i couldn't convert it to a ms pac because i didn't have the starter board you kind of require it there are other ways you can do it where you hack up the board but i wasn't interested in doing that i wanted to keep it kind of original so uh this actually takes the place of the processor right here and then it gives it that one plus all the other roms and stuff so let's go ahead and plug that in so you just carefully Place it right there. Yep, it's lined up. So now I'm just pushing it in. Make sure it's in there. Okay. I'm going to let this just hang down. Um, actually, you know what? I'll just put it up here. But I have to find a spot for that where I can screw it in. Uh, so now that that's on, you can kind of put the other board back in there. I'm just making sure that the notches are facing down. All right, so technically this should be a mispack because I put the daughter board in there, the processor's in there as well. I have the two swap chips and then the rest of the ROMs are actually Pac-Man ROMs. So hopefully this cheat one will work. If for some reason it doesn't work, I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out to be the normal Pac-Man, uh, which should work you know, with this. But technically you're only supposed to switch these two and that daughter board. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see where we're at. All right, so check it out guys. It is the Ms. Pac-Man. Um, I didn't try the cheats yet. I actually turned it on. I see it. I can see the game starts. I tried it once. I didn't play. Now I'm going to try playing now with the cheats to see. So this still has a cheat thing in there. I'm curious if it works for Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man as well, because it is technically for Pac-Man. So let's try it. Game seems to be behaving normally, so. And you can see I'm naturally putting my hand up, <laughs> getting comfortable just like everybody else did. Uh, let me try pressing the button, see what happens. Yep, makes it fast. Cool, that's exactly what I wanted. And let's see if I'm immune. Let's see if it works. Yep, the immunity works as well. Check that out. How about both of them? Yep, both of them work. Press down. Cool, I'm super happy. Now let's see, I didn't press it, I'm just pressing two. And it works. So now all we have to do is kind of get rid of that waviness. And we're good to go. So um, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and pop in the other board. But before I do, I'm going to show you exactly what's wrong with it. We'll throw some ROMs that are repaired in there. And then we'll continue and see if that board actually works. Because he got it for 40 bucks. It's kind of a crapshoot. It's untested. Let's try and check it out. Okay, guys. So I'm having a little trouble here. I actually um, took a break, started to play. And I realized that some of the graphics were a little glitched. Uh, so I ended up putting the slow Pac-Man back in, that chip, the 6F chip, and it still does the same thing, just slower. <laughs> so I thought it was a cheat um, 6F chip for a second, messing everything up. But something else is going on, I'm not really sure. It behaved fine with the regular Pac-Man, so this is a different Z80 processor on a daughter card. So what I'm going to try to do is swap out the Z80 processor first uh, to see if that solves the problem. If that doesn't work, um, then I'm going to go ahead and swap the ROMs. Could be a bad ROM or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, but anyway, check this out. Looks fine, you know, at first glance. But um, as soon as I eat, yeah, you can see the orange ghost. You see him? He's a little crazy. He's doing a lot of crazy stuff. And then when I eat them, there's like graphical glitches around the ghosts themselves. So not really sure what's going on here. There's also a graphical glitch around um, the, you know, the uh, intermission scenes where it has the lettering there, so I'm not really sure. You can see the graphical glitches right there. So I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, but anyway, let me try switching out that processor. Could be that. Uh, I wasn't doing this with the regular Pac-Man. It's only been since I added the, um, the ROMs, you know, the uh, daughter card. So 
Uh, let me see what's up. I'll kind of get back to this and we'll uh, resume. Okay guys, so we're back. So I have the board hooked up. I actually wanted to rule out the harness. So I actually bought this adapter from Arcade Shop. It's a JAMA to um, Pac-Man adapter. This here is JAMA in my cocktail. I have it actually laid on the floor here, um, opened it up. And this little jumper here, it's the only one on the whole board. Um, if you have a cocktail, I think there's a, I believe a pad that you need to solder in order for it to become cocktail mode. If you have that on your PCB, um, you can actually switch this to cocktail so that'll match. Uh, but mine's set for upright, so that's what this uh, little jumper is set to, it's upright. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on um, and we'll see exactly what appears um, on the um, on this JAMA version to see, you know, just to kind of rule out the harness. So I'm kind of just systematically uh, ruling stuff out to see what it is. So let me go ahead and switch the camera. I just wanted to show you this setup real here, here real quick of what I did, and then we'll kind of have the cocktail up here um, displaying what we need to see. Okay, so I have the game here. I have the board plugged in to the JAMA adapter and all original chips that I had on there. And let me turn it on. So looks like it's uh, even worse than it was before. <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking it's something uh, else, um, you know, cause it was doing this actually before I filmed, um, it was acting weird where we were saying ROM, ROM error zero or error ROM one, error ROM two. So I think it has something to do, since they're brand new ROMs that I had um, burned in there, I actually tried swapping the other ones. Um, it turned out um, it may be the socket. I'm, I'm really gearing towards that. So um, I'm gonna go back to the board real quick. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. Um, for sockets, I actually bought something that makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot. So let me go ahead and switch back. But this is what the board's doing, the same one that was working, you know, earlier, so. Okay, so we're back at the board here. Um, I'm actually gonna shut it off. This little switch right here makes it really convenient. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna be able to press on the chips, but when I press on the chips, um, it's hard to get under here in order to do that uh, because ROM zero I think is E. Yeah, it's this one right under here and you can't really get to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this board and um, install, JRock actually makes a, a replacement for this. Here, I'll show you right now. So this is it right here. So this here is the uh, sync bus controller and then this one over here, I'm gonna pop that off too, is a VRAM addresser. And these are kind of clunky boards and you have to, you know, they get loose all the time and this and that, and plus they're blocking the chips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install his board. So JRock makes his boards. I'm gonna actually show you up close here. So this is it. They're kind of replacements for those right there. You can see here it says, uh, where is it, uh, SBC, which is sync bus controller, and then VRA, which is VRAM addresser. So it's really cool that he has those. Um, they're about, I don't know, $18 each. I figured I'd get them to kind of modernize and bulletproof my board. So I'm gonna go ahead and install them, and then you'll see I'll be able to access all the chips without having to take anything out anymore. So, uh, so the sync bus controller goes here on top, and pin one, it says here, it's pretty labeled. It's clearly labeled on there. That's gonna go up. So let me go ahead and pop that in there. And that's it right there. So I'm just gonna put it in, it has a nice snug fit. So that's in there. And then the VRA, I'm gonna stick over here. And it looks like um, it's facing the opposite way. So let me double check here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're all gonna face that way because that's where all the pins, the chips go and that's how it was before. Let me just double check that I have the board right here. Yeah, so the board goes on like this and the notch is that way. So pin one is that way and it has like a little notch on there. So let me just pop that in there. Let me just clean that off there. All right. So that's in there nice and snug. That's in there nice and snug. So now I have full access to push these down to figure out if it's a socket issue, which I'm kind of suspecting because I swapped out these ROMs with burned ROMs that I had and then burned a new set. I still had the same issues. And I think because I was messing with these earlier, um, you know, these are really notorious. These sockets here are really, really cheap on old Pac-Man boards and they're very brittle. They get worse over age. So um, 
I ordered new ones. I actually have machined ones that I might put in there because the machined ones, I kind of, I know a lot of people don't like them, but I like them because they're easier to solder and then it'll have a more secure connection. So um, I may put machined ones in here. I may switch this one out depending, but I think these are really the issues right here. And I don't think it's a processor because I tried swapping that. It didn't make a difference. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to turn it on now. I'll have try to get multiple angles here so you can see what I'm doing as I'm pressing them and how it's reacting on the screen while I do it. Okay guys, so here it is. I'm going to turn it on. And I do have those replacement chips in there from J-Rock. Um, and you could see, you know, it changed a little bit. It changes uh, randomly uh, because I do have that on there. Um, you know, I, I am messing around with it and I'm pressing up on the chips and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in real time what I'm doing. So sorry about the bright light. If you can't see it, I just need to see what I'm doing over here. Um, but basically you can see here, these are the chips. And I believe if you get a ROM zero error, it's this one and then ROM one, ROM two, ROM three, and so on. So according to the manual. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press on it and we'll see what, what's happening. So I'm pressing down, let's see, because I was able to kind of mess around. There we go, you can see, see it's resetting when I press that. You guys see that? It's acting all goofy. So there's something going on with the sockets for sure. It's very possible since I messed around with so many. Let me press down on a few. Oh, this one's actually coming out a little bit. Yeah. And then there it is. Bad ROM 2. So it's saying 1, 2. So this one here. So let me press on that and see if it resets anything. No. Nope. Try pressing on the rest. Oh, that did something. There we go. There we go. So that's what it is. I just pressed on up, up on it. Let me see if I let go if it does anything. Nope, it's fine. So my guess is that these ROMs, these um, sockets are bad. Uh, they're super old. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace them uh, with sockets. Not really sure what I want to do. If I want to put machined ones or the dual wipe ones that are quality versus these cheap ones here. Uh, but the game is working now, as you can see. Let me see if I can press it here. I'll press player one and player two. Let's do a two player game. And there's no sound. I might have turned it down. Let me see here. No, actually. Hmm. I wonder if this JAMA adapter is not fully compatible. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do have sound. Um, I should be able to control it. I'm going to go ahead and see real quick to see what I can do here. Let's see. So it should be down, left, down, right. Yeah, so this is right. That's up, left, up. Okay. Looks like it's behaving normally. I bet you if I stick it in the machine right now, it should work fine. So um, let's actually do that. Let's stick it in the machine, see what's going on, and make sure that that's what it is. And then we'll just change out the sockets because I think they're just loose is what it is. Okay guys, so we're back. So I ended up testing it in the machine. It had sound by the way, it was fine. Um, so it must be just to have it turned down or something on the cocktail, not really sure. Anyway, um, I tried it, it worked for about five minutes and then it um, kind of screwed up again. So um, definitely an issue with those sockets. So it's these right here. Um, specifically, I think this is um, bad ROM zero, bad ROM one, bad ROM two, bad ROM three, like the error codes that you get. And this one, it said bad ROM two. So it's definitely this one right here that's having issues. I'm going to replace all four, possibly these two. I'm not really sure yet. might leave those alone. This I'm going to probably leave alone as well for now. Um, and if I have to, I have stuff on order to get this, but I do have some machine sockets here now for these four. So I'm going to see if I can replace those first to see if it cures the problem. And then if I have issues down the line, I can always just take it out and replace the rest of them. Um, I do have the, um, you know, the 284 and the 285 in here, you know, just as, um, you know, to be more, a little more rock solid because these don't move or anything. So hopefully those will be fine. Um, they are fine. The boards were fine. It was working good. That's these things right here. These are the aux boards that I'm talking about. 
that go in there. So the bigger one actually goes down here this way and then this one goes in this way. So I'm eliminating those completely. That way I can get to the chips easier. But in order to do everything, I'm going to have to desolder everything. I just wanted to show you real quick what I have. This here is, um, I guess I got it for like maybe $40 on uh, Amazon. It's just an air, um, you know, unit that kind of desolders using air. And I use these as a secondary. I kind of desolder it with the FR300 first, um, which is, you know, the desoldering gun, which I have right here uh, from underneath. And then I go on top, anything that's missed, I don't want to lift any traces. So I kind of just heat it up with this with air and use some pliers and just gently it falls right out. It's awesome. So this thing is awesome for, um, I would totally recommend it for $40. It's not the best brand, but you know, it does its job. And of course I have the triple eight D, um, you know, soldering iron here along with the FR 300 desoldering station here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can guys can see a little better. And I'll go like right about there. Now I'm going to be like lifting up the board a lot and, getting underneath so it's going to kind of get out of the shot a couple times but i will put it here and i will show you what to do with this thing um so you guys probably already know how to desolder stuff but i'll try to you know get it on camera here all right so the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm just going to remove all the stuff here because i don't want to accidentally desolder stuff with the air that would be bad <laughs> so let me carefully take this out i'll put it to the side I have it inside like uh, this foam. Let me take this one out too. So I'll take that, put that to the side. And then these, uh, I'm gonna put right here along with these other ones. So I just have some foam to put it on. So it's easier to take it out on this side rather than the other side. You just kind of go underneath, twist it. I'm actually popping it on here like that so the pins don't get bent up because these actual chips I believe belong to Buffett like I was saying he put them in so I have replacements I'm going to pop in there but for now I'm going to try it with his original chips and then put it like that great so you just put them away and put them to the side all right, so just in case I kind of thought about it, I'm actually going to take the processor out as well, the Z80, just to be safe. I don't want it um, messing things up. And then these I'm just going to leave in there. That's fine. Okay, so the first step I'm going to do is just flip it over. And these sockets are, let's see, there's four here. Just trying to get a fix of it here. So this is them right here. I'm actually putting my finger on it. It's a little tight because I have this big thing here now. So there's one, two, three, and four. So what I typically do is I'll mark it with a marker. So let me get a Sharpie and I'll double check it again. Hang on a second. So there's one. Okay, so I see it right there. So it's gonna be this one, whatever I have in between. So it's one, two, three, and four. So these are the four I'm gonna take out. And let me go to town. So I'm gonna get these first here. So, and I also have the, the thinner tip on here. So this thing pretty much does all the work for you. However, uh, taking it off on the other side, a lot of the pins will stick, so you can't... It's different if you're taking out caps, because you can do one at a time and pull on each side, but you can't pull the whole socket at the same time if there's a few pins that are sticking. So that's where the, the hot air comes in, where you kind of just blow it on there and you just lift it right up. So that's one. I'm gonna move on to the next one now. Uh, 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 uh. 
Also, tell me in the comments, do you guys prefer if I do this all in real time or should I do some edits? For example, instead of showing every single one here, I can kind of skip ahead and say, all right, I did that to one, let me get the rest. And then I'll come back in another shot saying, okay, I took the rest out. You know, I may do that in this video. But let me know if you guys don't want that, if you want me to show the whole entire process. You know, I don't want to have like a three hour video. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you guys want to see in detail what it is, I figured if I show one, that should be good enough. If I didn't have this desoldering station, I don't think I'd try attempting to take out sockets because you can do it, I guess, with a uh, solder bullet, <laughs> but uh, it may take a little longer and you don't want to lift any traces. This here works great, especially with this tip, which is a little skinnier than the default one, so it fits these pins perfectly. That's why I mark them because it's easier to do instead of having to flip it over every time. These are coming out pretty good. Sometimes the pins will be bent, it makes it a little more difficult. But this board is in pretty good shape. Can't wait to get rid of these uh, terrible sockets. Like I said, they're notorious from what I've read to go bad. They're just really cheaply made. All right, so I did all those. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss on some glasses here. I have these great glasses that they kind of light up. You guys have seen them before. But it has an LED on there, it's awesome. And it has magnifiers, which you can change out. These things actually come off, so. All right, so I'm gonna put that on and I'm gonna get my face in here to see if they're good or not. I'm just gonna examine it. So it looks like those are really, there's a couple that didn't go as planned, but that's fine. I mean, most, of, most of the solder's out. I'm looking at all of them. So it's good. So now I'm gonna flip it over, put it back here. And then uh, what I tend to do is you can either hold the board kind of vertical like this and like go on one side while you're on the other, or you can just lift them up here, heat them up. But I feel if you heat them up from the top, uh, the plastic actually tends to come off and then you have just the pin stuck in there. I'm gonna try to get it off in one shot, but it's really hard to do. So um, I'm gonna do it by holding the board. So I might have to zoom out a little bit here. So I'm just gonna kind of do this, All right? Kind of pull it on one side and heat it up on the other. It does get pretty hot, so I may have to put like a screwdriver. There's like little grooves in there where you can get a skinny screwdriver in there. But you wanna be careful not to scratch the board at the same time, so it's kind of an art. So this thing here, as soon as you take it off, it starts heating up. You can actually hear it, you hear that blowing? So that's what it's doing. And uh, I'm gonna hold it. When you put it down, it, it stops, it stops heating up, so. I have that set to 350 degrees Celsius, which is around, what, six something in Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna kind of do this and balance it. So I'm just heating up the pins here and then kind of just pulling it slowly. Should pop right out, but you know, it takes practice for sure. I mean, I'd even be up to, uh, 
the heat that it's supposed to. There we go. I can see it popping out a little bit. And I'm going to do this side. There we go. So, yeah. Just popping some of it out. As long as you don't rush it, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's it's melting it just like I didn't want it to. <laughs> but uh, it's fine. I'll show you how to take it out if this happens to you. And it's perfectly safe if that happens. So basically, this came out like this. And you can see the pins are still in there. I'm actually going to try... Uh, I'll do one and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me put that down. So if this happens to you where it comes out and the pins stay in, which does kind of happen. I think it's because these things are pretty cheap anyway. They're very brittle and old, so they're not grabbing there to begin with. You just take some pliers, needle nose pliers, and you're not going to be yanking them out. You're actually going to wait. The only reason you're using this um, really is for the heat, but you're going to wait till it melts and you'll see it just get really loose there. And then you just use this to take it out. And I'm going to zoom in to show you guys. So. so this thing here, what you do is I hold it with my left depending if you're lefty or righty, I'm righty. And then I'm gonna be kind of pulling them out with this. So you kind of do this, you can see it, it moves. See that one just fall there, that one too. They pull right out, see? All you're doing is melting the solder from underneath and they come right out. So you're not pulling anything out, you're not lifting any, anything at all. See how that moved? And you're just slowly just taking them out. So this thing has been awesome. I have to say. It's really worth its weight in gold, like I like to say. <laughs> so this is probably the safest way to desocket something, because you don't want to be futzing with it, heating it up from underneath. That one's a little stubborn. There we go. That one still has solder in it, so. And the hardest part for me with using this tool is to make sure I lift it up when I'm not doing anything, because you can melt stuff without realizing it. So they come right out. Again, I'm not using this to pull it. I'm using it just to, because it's hot. So if your fingers are made of metal or something, <laughs> that doesn't hurt. You could actually dig it out with your fingers, but I'm not putting any force at all. It's melting it, doing it's all, it's doing all the work for me. And then sometimes I'll, I'll go through like this and melt the rest that's on there. You can go over it again with a, uh, with a desoldering tool. Let's see, so. Kind of do this. Just want it to be a hole there so that you can put the new stuff in. Sometimes I'll add solder because it's a little stubborn. You want these all to be nice and clean. This makes it easier in the long run. I think that's pretty good. And what I do is I tend to, because I'm using this heat gun here and the blowing of the air, I don't want to put the new sockets in first because I don't want to be blowing air on the stuff I just put on there. So, but I'm going to do a test fit real quick. So the sockets I use are going to be these. These are the, uh, these are the machine sockets. I label them all. Uh, you'll see how they look. And, um, you know, a lot of people frown on these because they're machined and they're not, you know, stuff will slip out but I've already tried them in there on another board and it work, they, these work really great for me you can get these uh, let's see that's 24 pin you have these here these are budget sockets where they're dual wipe but they're really cheap Chinese ones um, you could really tell because they don't have that cross in the middle see how like um, 
these actually have them on the board, even though these are cheap too, but they have like that little bar going across so they, you know, just makes them a little stronger. These don't have those, so that's how you can tell they're pretty cheap and they're, these fall apart, you know, if you blink at them. So um, I ordered a whole bunch of these not knowing years ago. Uh, I still have them. I actually ordered uh, newer ones that are dual wipe that are quality compared to these, which I thought about putting in, but they're not here yet. So I've used these in the past, so I'm gonna use these for, um, put them in and see what happens but so I'm just gonna take one off here and let me see if we can get in here and I'm just gonna test fit it on there and it should pop right in yeah looks like it's good to go so that's on there and that's how it goes in there so and then you just all you have to do is solder it on the back and what's good about these machine pin sockets is that they they're a little thicker, so they kind of hold themselves in. Um, and also, they're bigger to solder on there. It's just a lot easier, in my opinion, than soldering these tiny ones over here. Okay, guys, we're back. So, what I did was, I actually put solder in every single hole here, and then cleaned it out with the desoldering iron. They came out nice and clean. Um, there's a couple spots here where you can see, um, I filled them with some solder here because they were empty. Uh, these were the hacks um, that were on here, that were on the board itself. So I cleaned those up just to put solder in it, to fill it in. So that's what these are here. But um, you can see here are the four sockets. So one, two, three, and four. Uh, this one here, um, I definitely lifted the pad on. I examined it. So what I did was I scratched off a little bit of this uh, you know, shared spot here and then kind of blobbed some solder in there. And what I'm gonna do for this one, which I'm gonna put in right now, is I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know, I want that extra solder to be there so it'll make contact with that at the same time with the pin. So instead of putting like an actual um, wire or anything, I kind of am using the solder for that. So when I'm putting this one in, that one pin there, I'm gonna have to heat up from the other side and then push it down at the same time. So I'm gonna do that one first. So essentially, instead of just sticking it in and putting it in like that, I'm actually gonna, you can see it's kind of lifted there. And then um, I'm gonna heat it up and push it down so it should make contact with that and be fine. So let me do that right now, right on there. You'll be able to see that there's solder filled in. So that's where that pin is gonna go through. So all I have to do now is I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to, I'm gonna tin my uh, point here just a little bit. And now I'm just gonna, as I hold this here, I'm gonna take this point right here and kind of look closely and Push it in as I, there we go. Did you see that? So now I know it's definitely contacting the solder on the other side, and at the same time I have it in here. So now I can just go ahead and solder that one in. So these are easier to solder on in my opinion. They're bigger, fatter pins. Well, they, maybe they, it's just me, but it seems that way that they're more round versus the flatter ones. These to me are more durable on this Pac-Man board, so I hate using the word bulletproofing, but we may be bulletproofing this board a little bit, <clears throat> especially after we cap it. So I have a Bob Roberts cap kit and I also have the Arcade Shop cap kit. And the Arcade Shop cap kit, you know, I'm a big fan of Michikan capacitors and that's what it has in there, so I might end up using that instead of the Bob Roberts one. All right, so that looks good. I'm just double checking them all. All right. So I'm going to clean this up later with some alcohol, but for now, you can see how it came out. Let's see if I can get it. Yes, so there it is right there. And that pin was the one that was affected, and it's, uh, when you're looking sideways, you can see it's touching and it's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. Should be able to pop them all in at once. So let me grab this and pop it in. Yeah, this one's a little loose here, so... 
I'm going to do one at a time instead of popping them in all at once because I want to be able to tack it down. So what's happening is it's right here, right there, and then the other side is right there. Uh, but what I got to do is hold it in the center because these pins get really hot. So I'm just going to take some solder. So I got to hold it with one hand here. And off camera, I'm just taking a blob and I'm just uh, tacking this first one in here. If I can get it in there. And it's a little sloppy, but it'll hold. Maybe one over here. All right, that's good. So that's it. You can see on camera there. So let me go ahead and uh, tin this again so it's nice and clean. And now I'm just going to put the rest in. I'm going to tack this side first, actually. Just so it holds itself in there. And then what I'm going to do is... Is this thing on? Yeah, it is. I'm just going to clean up that first pin. Alright. I'm going to tack the rest on there. So now I'm just putting the rest in. I'll just clean up the tip a little bit. side. By the way, I have my uh, soldering iron set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I feel that's good because it'll get in there and get out real quick. You know, if you have it on a lower setting, you have to be on there a little longer. So I want to be able to get in there and get out you know, with the heat. Great, so I'm going to turn it over and these are the sockets. Beautiful. Now again, this one's backwards. I have the notch facing the other way, but you know, the rest I did fine. Um, it's not the first time I've done that, but I know they all face this way. So let's go ahead and pop in the original ROMs that I have here. So this is F which is right here. That's the speed one. Actually, let me leave that one out and let's put in the cheat one. Pac-Man cheat at 6F. That's this one right here. So I'm facing them the right way. in that's the snug just make sure they're in there before I press down yeah, that works now they're in here we go perfect let me just double check this one while I'm at it yep that's all in there everything's bent okay now we're gonna do here we go there's H and J, so H is right here. And even though it's backwards, I know to put it in the correct way. So that's there, those go in, and then these go in. So, okay, perfect. So that's that. And then the last one is gonna be J, which is right here. And it goes in this way. Let me just double check. Nice. So one, two, three, and four. Other thing I'm going to pop in is the 
processor. So I'll do that now. Let me just get rid of this uh, in here. Turn off my soldering iron. I'm gonna put in the processor, which is right here. Let's see here. So it's gonna face down. And I didn't change out this socket. I actually don't have this socket. <laughs> I do, but it's a really cheap socket here. And I really want to, uh, oops. Yeah, see, it's bending already. Got to be extra careful here. Usually I put one side in first a little bit, and then I'll coax the other side in by pushing it down. That looks good right there. There we go. All right, so that's on there. And then over here, I believe we have the SBC, which is the, instead of having the big board, I'm putting this back in. And again, I'm not re-socketing that one either. So we'll push that in nice and snug. And then same thing with this one over here. You guys see that? I'll actually turn it the other way so you can see it. Yeah, that's it right there. So this one's going to be facing like the other ones. Pin one, or the notch, right here. We're going to go in that direction. So that's it. So that replaces those big boards. And that's it. So let's zoom out a little bit. You can see what we're dealing with here. So this is it. Looks pretty cool. There it is. All the rest of the stuff. So it looks really nice and neat. Got the Z80 processor, the SBC. It's facing the correct way with pin one going that way, which is where the notches are. And then you have uh, 6E, 6F, 6H, and 6J. And then these I never touched. These are 5E and 5F, which are right there. All right, so let's pop this in. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Just turned it on. Let's see, I'm walking in front of it. It's gonna take a while for it to warm up. And it's a blank screen. <laughs> Erg. This is a bummer and I'm almost there almost there so close so let's see i'm going into test mode and nothing okay i wonder if it's the harness i'm gonna mess around with it a little bit let's see i'll keep it on there i feel like this harness sometimes there we go see yeah something's going on with that harness Luckily, I did, i probably do it in a future episode, but I do have a, um, a brand new uh, connector and pins. And those pins aren't cheap. They're like new old stock. So it's like, for a hundred of them, it's like $39. But uh, yeah, so it is that. So let's see. All right, so it's regular speed. And then with the cheat... Yep, it works great. And then let's let's try the cheat where you can't die. Yep, let's do both. Yep, and now let's let go. Let's see, let's let go and see. Yep, great. Excellent, I'm so psyched that we fixed this. And you can see the monitor looks really good. And I did turn the volume down a little bit. I did that when I was messing around to find out why it had no volume on the cocktail. Let's try to get some points here.
cool. Okay, so let's put the daughter board in. This is it right here. I actually found the bad ROM on here. Uh, it's this one right here at U5. Um, what I did was I removed them all and then one by one I tested them in my uh, burner and I was able to save the file locally and then compared it to Ramadan. And Ramadan's such a great site. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, definitely donate to that guy because it's really uh, useful where he stores all the stuff. What you do is you upload your ROM to him and then you, it compares it to the CRC of what he has and it tells you what game it's from. So if you ever have an unidentified game, you can do that too. Where you take any ROM out, you download it and then kind of upload it to him and you compare it. Uh, but this one here was bad. It wasn't coming up with any CRC, which means it was bad. So I just reburned that and then, um, you know, it all matched fine. So everything should be fine on this. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your processor and take it out and put it here. So right now, since it's a normal Pac-Man board, I'm gonna take this out. And I'm gonna pop that in here. You can see it's notched, so that's the way you put it in. And I'm not gonna press on that board there, but you kind of just pop it in there, just like so. And then you're gonna take this and pop this in where the other one was. And, oops. And it goes on this way. The arrow actually faces the opposite way. But you're gonna want the board so that it kind of faces out. That's how you know it's in the right direction. So that's in there just fine. And again, you know, you don't have to take this off to put that on because this is smaller. So it's pretty cool. So that's it. And then the other thing you have to do is change these two ROMs right here. So these are Pac-Man ROMs currently. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. And again, I didn't re-socket these because it wasn't having errors on these uh, sockets. So I'm just leaving them as is. And then let me take this one out. Alright, and now I'm going to take the uh, these right here, so it's Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man 5F, this is 5F, and it has to face the notch that way, and then 5E is right here, I'm just double checking that all the pins are still on, Let's do it that way, there we go. All right, so 5E, 5F, and the ribbon cable is in with the daughter card. So let's go ahead and pop this in, and then I'll set up the camera so we can turn it on for the first time. Okay, so I plugged it in, have everything set up. I'm going to keep an eye on that harness, and if it doesn't boot up, I'll just move it around a little bit. But again, I'm going to repin it in the future, not in this episode. Because I'm going to do a whole in-depth on how to pin stuff, because I know people were asking that. So I just supplied power. Let's take a peek and see what's going on. And it's still not turning on and it's because of the harness, I can tell you. Yeah, so the monitor is now officially on. So let me, um, right now it's not getting any power to the board is what's happening. Let's see if that did anything. Yeah, this harness is a little janky. There we go, now I can tell it's on, just by the sound. When you hear that hum, there you go. There it is, Miss Pac-Man, woo! Nice, so let's play our first game here. Cool. And then of course you have the cheat, which I'm gonna use. I love that you can choose either one without having to take any chips out. Now the graphics look a little garbled still. Just slightly. You can see like around the blue guys. I wonder if uh, there's something going on with the daughter board. You see that? Hmm. And the monitor is still a little wavy, so I definitely have to cap that. Now I'm going to try zooming in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll try to get him in this corner here. Let's 
see. Hold on, I'm off camera right now. I get it, but I'm gonna try to get him in this little area right here. What I'm doing now is just trying to get them all to come out. All right, so take, keep an eye on them. See how they look a little off? They're like glitchy a little bit. Hmm. Let's try it again. I'm off camera again, but I want you to see how they look here. You see that? They just look a little glitched out to me. That too. So let's see if it says Act 1 before it would act weird and say Act 2 on it. Yeah, see that little glitch around it? Can you see that? Yeah, see they disappeared as well. Alright, let's see what it does here. See the glitches around Act 2? Hmm. Now I'm going to see what happens with Act 3. Alright, Act 3. Yeah. Alright guys, so that about does it for this episode. Looks like we got it working. The Ms. Pack cabinet for the restore. And it is working beautifully right now. Um, you know, it does have a few graphical glitches, but at least it's pretty stable. Um, I'm going to check out that harness, I'm going to check all the voltages, but we're going to go ahead and do that in a future episode where we kind of go through, get the fuse block changed out, um, to kind of tighten up the um, electronics and the ground, um, and then um, if it still does it, then we'll kind of just focus on the board a little bit. Uh, but you can see there's like a little graphic glitch right there, so that's not supposed to be there and it's not really behaving like it should. So, uh, you know, we'll let it warm up for a little bit and I'll let you know next week um, what happens. But for most part, um, it's running really nice and great. And like we said, Ms. Pac-Man is here and it is running. So I'm really happy about that. So guys, if you haven't already done it, so, you know, subscribe. Thank you for those who already have. I know there's a lot of people on here that just are, they're kind of lurkers and they kind of are on there. And then I can see, you know, about 50% of you guys are not subscribed. So just consider subscribing. It's really fun. I have a lot of videos in store and a tons of projects to do. And uh, this is one of them. And I also have another surprise coming up. I'm actually heading down to Virginia again next week to hang out with Buffett. So I may do a video over there on that. Um, just follow me on Twitter. It's at Dell's Arcade. And you can see I'll be posting pictures on that adventure that I have out there. And I'm also picking up another cabinet that's out there. Uh, it's kind of a surprise as to what I want to do with it. But if you think this video is good, you should check out the future ones because it's a really, really great find that I got. So. Anyway, guys, um, follow me on Instagram as well. And of course, the t-shirts. The t-shirts support the channel. We have a lot of apparel, not only t-shirts, we have mugs, hats, all that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna be wearing all that stuff uh, when I'm out there and my buddy as well. And it's just really fun to have and you can really support the channel by doing that and really show your pride <laughs> with arcades, saying that you uh, subscribe to Delusional's Arcade. So I really appreciate it. So, okay guys, uh, this is a long series that we're gonna run uh, with Ms. Pac-Man, like I said, you know, get everything up to snuff, and also the marquee light we have to deal with as well. So stay tuned, we're gonna have a lot more fun with this cabinet here, so thanks again for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.